Right, so up here on the roof of my uh, fruiting chambers, just on the very edge, if we look down here, you can see that it goes straight down to the ground. Um, we're just going to show you how the intake system for my ventilation is, is going to work um, quickly before I build it all, so we can get up here and have a look. You can see that our ventilation pipe obviously comes straight down there, all the way down to where it comes to this Y joiner here. This Y joiner um, has two, I think they're called backdraft dampers on the end here. You can see in there, so this allows the, the uh, air to move through it this way but prevents it going back uh, the other way. And the main reason for this is if we see on this side here, the other part piece to the Y, one goes that way, one goes that way. Well, one fan here mounted already. Now that fan's gonna be blowing air this way, right? Now air's always gonna to try to take the path of least resistance, much like water does. Um, so if we don't have these dampers in here, it could try sucking air backwards through this pipe here, through the fan. Um, and we don't want air coming backwards through this because it will be sucking it out of the fruiting room. Um, so this pipe here is going to come out, go through its own fan, which will be here. So there's one fan here, there'll be another fan here, and it's going to go out and go down into this hole, which goes down into my um, fruiting chamber down there. You can see um, this is the other fan here, which blows it down here through this pipe and down into this fruiting chamber here. Now these fans are um, EC fans, which means that we can change the speed of them through a zero to 10 volt signal. Um, and they're actually, the core is removable, which I thought was pretty neat. I didn't know when I bought these. So we can actually pull that whole core out, clean it, whatever we want to. Um, but that's gonna be mounted around here. Um, I need to connect my controller. I've already connected these up and tested them, so I know they work really, really well. Um, the fans are a bit too powerful for these rooms. These fans can really churn some air, so I'll only ever be running them. Um, the lowest I can run them is 9% before they shut off, so I'll only ever run them probably between about 12% up to a maximum of 20%, maybe 25%. Any higher than that, and the volume of air is getting very, very large. Like these blowing full time will completely replace all the air in that room. And, like seconds right like they really pump a lot of volume but they'll just be spitting nice and slowly and providing air into my fruiting rooms now if you're concerned about um or thinking that i might be positively pressuring the fruiting rooms i won't be um, and we will have a look once we build the second part the air extraction out of the fruiting room and we'll discuss why that won't be the case so we're at the back of my fruiting rooms here, or one of them to be exact, the back of the second one's just down there, and I am building our atmosphere extraction. Um, this device here is going to house our heat exchangers, which will slot in, the cover will go over, um, and then this will twist up and go up to the roof and push all that CO2 filled, spore filled air out the top. Um, to show you how these heat exchangers slot in, this is one I've imported from China here. So. I bought this one from China and it's far cheaper than buying anything local. Um, none of the stuff is manufactured here in New Zealand. And these just slot in like that here. And if you want to know what's better than, let's get that in. If you want to know what's better than one heat exchanger, oh yes, it's having two heat exchangers. Here's another one. So we can actually slot two of these in here, like this here. Um, so they'll just sit in like that there. They sit in really nicely. Um, and as you can see, this pipe here, we have this corner elbow here that'll connect to that. Look at that, it just slots in there just like that. Um, and this here will have a big uh, fan on it, a centrifugal fan, and this will push all the air up and out. Now, I thought long and hard about whether I wanted a, um, a, a cross flow heat exchanger where the, where the gases cross each other or a ear to ear to liquid heat exchanger and I've chosen ear to liquid simply because um, the liquid then holds that heat energy and you can transport that liquid somewhere else. You don't need to um, channel the ear intake past the ear exhaust. I didn't want to do that so we've gone ear to liquid. Firstly apologies for the echo in here and the poor lighting. There's no lights mounted in here yet and it's really echoey. Um, but you can see here this is the where the heat exchanger is mounted and this just has a nice piece of aluminium extrude around. Um, and the air will flow out of here straight through that uh, heat exchanger, heat recovery um, device right there. What I can also do if I want to filter the air, uh, my idea is to get um, like a filter mesh or a filter cloth or simply have it magnetized to the wall around it. So you just throw it on and it will um, 
take those spores out of the ear before they move or some of them before they move through the exchanger and the fan um, and then every you know day two three however long it takes for the filter cloth to get a bit, bit built a bit blocked up you simply take it off throw it in the wash and put a new one on there so we've cracked on most of the day to try and get this done um, and it's looking pretty good. So you can see here what I've done is the, the heat exchangers are completely mounted inside here with this removable lid which sits over the top and it's got some holes for those copper pipes to come out. Um, there's also a lip right around the edge here where I'll put like a, a foam um, seal or maybe a, a silicon seal and basically this will sit on the top with a small weight on there holding it down. I'll create some little seals just around these pipes um, and we should have this box completely sealed. So when that um, fan which will be on here sucks air, it's going to suck it and it's going to rip it through those two heat exchanges in there. You can choose to turn them on or not even run them if you don't want to. Um, it is optional. But we are looking pretty good. I'm really happy with that. I still need to seal it. So get in there with, with like a silicon and seal all the edges. Um, so there's no air permeation from outside here through any of these cracks. Now a lot of the stuff I've never done before um, and I just sort of try and figure it out as I go. Um, I've never had to join copper tubing before so I'm going to have to do some googling, figure out the best way to join that. Ideally it'll be joining that and changing it straight to plastic. Um, the water will come in here and then it'll flow out here back into there and then out that one. Or alternatively I can only run one if I want to. Um, I'm not sure um, how the efficiency goes between running one or two. I believe to make these uh, air to liquid heat exchange is more efficient, you actually increase the rate at which the liquid pumps through them. The faster the liquid moving through, the more heat that can suck out more efficiently. Um, so if I've got two in there, we can just run that liquid through probably a bit slower. Um, and it will be of the same efficiency as a, what, what, a single one that's running on a really fast pump. These took me about two full days of work to complete just these boxes here. Reasonably time consuming, but um, when you put your mind to it, you can sort of get it done. So if you look up behind me now, you can basically see the intakes right up there. I've got the heater core, in, sorry, the fan core in one, but the fan core is not in the other. I still need to wire up the 0 to 10 signal um, cable to those fan cores, so I still need to access them. And I haven't yet insulated the final metre or so of ducting, which is coming out and going straight down into my fruiting chambers. So these are the heat exchangers here, and look at the size of those! They are good ones, eh? These ones are going on the intake to the pre-conditioning room and they'll just get placed um, right sandwiched just like that there and the air will flow through them. There's actually, this is one set of small ones and I do have another set of small ones that's just out the back there at the moment. So the air will move through this here, it'll break into two pipes, one will flow through this set, the second one will flow through another set and then they'll both pump into a reservoir that'll hold the water, the warmed or cooled water and then that water will get pumped back through these. I plan on having a thermometer either side of the intakes here so we can see just how much power we are saving. If we know the flow of air and we know the temperature change we should really be able to calculate how much watts of energy we are saving. So that's watts of heat energy we don't have to use a heat pump to generate. And in the long run it will be saving money. Will this be cost effective though? I don't really know. It's maybe not so much about cost savings as more more about making sure I can get that air to the right temperature. Instead of having to rely on a heat pump to change all that air temperature, let's say if it's zero degrees up to 18, you know, the heat pump might struggle. But if you can run it through this and shift that zero degree air to, you know, 10 or 12 degrees, that's a whole lot less work that heat pump has to do.